Hi, I'm Amelia and I'm six years old. Hi, I'm Zosha and I'm eight years old. Hi everyone, this is Mommy. What's up everyone, I'm Daddy. And you're listening to... It's, it's Movie, Movie Night. Night. And this week we watched The Page Master. 20th Century Fox released this live action animation mixed film in 1994. It's rated G and has a runtime of one hour and 15 minutes. Some other kid-friendly movies Fox released around this time were Miracle on 34th Street and Far From Home, The Adventures of Yellow Dog. Interesting movie. I've never seen it. <laughs> I have never seen it, but what a what a name. <laughs> I know. I'd always heard of it as well. Like I just I just knew it as Far From Home. So the fact that it's The Adventures of Yellow Dog. I wonder if that's his name, Yellow Dog. I don't know. Far From Home just makes me think of Spider-Man. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I get that. This movie is about a young man who seeks shelter in a library during a scary storm, but after slipping on a puddle and hitting his head, he wakes up to find himself animated and interacting and going into the stories of adventure, horror, and fantasy. Some familiar faces and voices. We have Richard Tyler, played by Macaulay Culkin. We know him as Kevin McAllister, I'd say the most, in Home Mm -hmm. Alone and Home Alone 2. He is Thomas J. in My Girl. Richie and Richie Rich, must like the name Richard for his characters. Yep. And uh, parents, you may recognize him as Henry from The Good Son. I actually saw The Good Son at a very young age. And I don't know why I liked it as much as I did, but I did. I saw it too. My mom had it on and she was like, oh, want to watch this with me? And then afterwards, <laughs> we both kind of looked at each other like maybe we shouldn't have watched this together. <laughs> different times, different times. <laughs> the librarian or page master is played by Christopher Lloyd. He is Dr. Emmett Brown in Back to the Future, Fester Adams in the Adams Family films from the 90s, as well as Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I feel like these are all movies you could watch as a family. Oh, heck yeah. Christopher Lloyd only makes family-friendly movies. He's just such a good, wholesome time. And then the voice of adventure is Sir Patrick Stewart. He is Professor Charles Xavier in the X-Men franchise. Well, one of them. Yes. The OG. He is Captain Jean-Luc Picard in the Star Trek franchise, but I remember him as well as the narrator from Ted. Do not watch this with your kids. Yep, definitely not a kid's (laughs) movie, but yeah, it's it's fun to know that he is that voice in the movie. It's just fun to know that he could be so serious and yet so fun at the same time. Yeah. Any genre he's open for. Fantasy is voiced by Whoopi Goldberg. Kids may recognize her as Shenzi from The Lion King, one of the hyenas. And two other movies that might possibly be family-friendly, but kind of toy a line. She is Oda Mae Brown in Ghost, and she is Dolores in the Sister Act films. Sister Act is definitely kid-friendly. Ghost, eh, tiptoes that line. It could be some scary parts, but I know I watched that young as well. I don't think there's anything too bad in there. No, nothing racy. Yeah. Horror is voiced by Frank Welker, which we have talked about him on previous episodes, but you may recognize him as Scooby-Doo in Scooby-Doo. He is Megatron in literally anything Transformers, and he's also done some work in Aladdin as Abu, Raja, and the Cave of Wonders. Yeah, he's like the Alan Tudyk of the 90s that we were talking about. Yes, yes. always doing some type of voice of an animal or creature. He's always there in Disney. It's like him and Jim Cummings. Yes. And then there are two directors of this movie, one who directed all the live action and one who directed all the animation. The live action was done by Joe Johnston. He did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Jumanji, October Sky, Jurassic Park 3, and Captain America the First Avenger. Those are all solid films. Pretty solid films, yeah. yeah. And then the other director who directed the animation is Maurice Hunt. This is the only movie that he's directed. However, he did direct one of the parts in Fantasia 2000. It was Symphony No. 5. And then he was in the art department for The Emperor's New Groove, Tarzan, and The Black Cauldron. Okay. So he has a movie background, and I think he did a pretty good job with this one. Yeah, he's got the dabbles of the adventure and the fantasy for this movie, for sure. (laughs) Yes, he does. So, Mommy, you said this movie came out in 1994. It specifically came out in November How old were you when this movie came out? Did you see it in theaters, and do you remember liking it? So, November of 94, I was still two at the time. I did not see it in theaters. I honestly haven't watched this movie all the way through until two nights ago. Oh, wow, okay. Um, I've always saw... 
I've always seen pieces of it like here and there, but just never in its entirety, which isn't hard. It's only an hour and 15 minutes, <laughs> yeah. but I, no, I just never sat down and actually watched the whole thing. Okay. What about you? Is this a, I, I can't believe this came out in theaters. Uh, so November 94, I was four years old. I don't remember seeing it in theaters. There's a possibility I did. I remember liking it a lot though. Cause I did see it like as soon as it came out. So probably like 95, I saw it. Which I, I just thought it was awesome. I mean, it's Kevin McAllister going, I, yeah, everybody going into knows books. Who that is. Yeah. <laughs> going into books. And I remember liking it a ton. I remember having a book. It was like one of those press books with buttons and it, yeah. it gave uh it gave like little snippets of the movie. I, I carried that book everywhere. I know that it's garbage now and it's I had to have thrown it away because it was just wrecked. I loved those books. Like, what a classic 90s thing. I had all the Disney ones. Yeah. Like, I remember, in particular, the 101 Dalmatian ones. Okay. And my parents would just go crazy, because they're like, stop it! It would just be the dogs barking, and I would press all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Aladdin one had, like, a, a tinking of swords, yeah. like, uh, or coming out of a sheath. Like, that was a good one. I also had a Batman one, too. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah, I had the Batman one as well. Yep. Good times. What happened to the good old 90s things? Yeah, well, I don't know. Only the pants are coming back, not the cool toys. <laughs> <laughs> so for the page master, Zosha, did we have a title drop in this movie? Yes. Do you remember when it was? It happened a couple times, but the first time was in the library. Who, who are you? I am the page master, keeper of the books and guardian of the written word. Yeah, it was towards the beginning of the movie when um, everything turns to animation and Christopher, yeah. it's still Christopher Lloyd, and he comes <laughs> yeah. forward and he's like, I am the page master. And then Zosha proceeded to bury her head into a blanket as we <laughs> stared into her soul. <laughs> and then for Cat Cam, Amelia, was there any cats in this movie? No, no cats. Yeah, unfortunately, no cats in this movie. There's always next time. What about some favorite scenes? Daddy, was there anything that stuck out for you? I don't know why that even as a kid, I loved the scenes where Richard and adventure and horror and fantasy go into the horror section. And it is scary at times. This had to have been one of the first scary things I had ever seen at the time. And I remember loving it. But I also remember when I was younger, my grandfather had showed me like uh, Frankenstein, the 1932 movies and yeah. like Dracula. And there was a Dr. Dracula and Mr. Hyde. So when I saw this in this animated movie, it was my, it was, I don't know, it was kind of nostalgic for me to be seeing something like that on the screen and be in animation. So I just love that section and I, I still do. I could see it being memorable because it's just so drastically different to everything else we're exposed to at that age that we're, we're going to remember the eerie, creepy thing when everything else is so bright, colorful, and happy. Yeah, it's just always stuck out to me. I, I love that. It's my probably one of my favorite sections of the entire movie. I know Zosha and I really liked the part where fantasy was like testing her wand and she ends up turning adventure into a fairy and he's got like the little yeah. tutu skirt on and like the makeup and he's like, what did you do? And Zosha and I were laughing so hard at that. He's got like his hands on his hips in this strong heroic yes. pose, but he's unaware that he has all of this girly things on him at the time. You know, there, there we're, open to, we're yeah. open to people doing that nowadays, but at the time this was something that it would make fun of, of boys dressed up as girls and that's what this is and he doesn't like that either because he's like what is this stuff on me like it, it's well he's like mr manly little pirate guy you know <laughs> yeah he's got a peg leg and everything and he's got an eye patch that is unnecessary he just wears it to be cool like it's a funny scene amelia's favorite scene is right around that time as well and it's when because this takes place in like the treasure island portion of the movie yes and adventure gets stuck inside the treasure chest and horror goes to help him out so he knocks he he's fully aware that adventure is inside there and when he knocks he's like who is it and he goes you know who's in there he just goes crazy and it is a funny scene who's there Adventure who? What do you mean? Adventure who? Horror's very playful throughout the entire movie. And he's he, very childlike. Just so innocent in the fact that he was doing this and Adventure was having none of it. Adventure's just oh, such a serious crabby old man. <laughs> he, That's Adventure. He is. Did you have a favorite scene, Mommy? 
I really enjoyed when Richard and everyone were fighting the dragon. It was mm, just, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's slowly showing him conquering all these fears and coming out of his shell. Like, wait, I have an idea. I'm not I'm not a hopeless kid. We got this. You know, he's starting to fight back and they're all together as a team. And it's just like, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, it is a really cool scene because he, he's right there at the exit sign mm-hmm. and he turns back and he realizes that none of his friends are behind him. So he has to to, they're in the fantasy portion of this movie at this time and this one he finds like an a knight who's already been slain by the dragon so he takes the he takes the shield and the sword and, and the helmet yeah. and he's like i gotta go help my friends so he's he's a real g and goes after the after the dragon and it's awesome it's super cool yeah you don't leave no one behind it's really cool when he does get uh swallowed by the dragon and he has to look to the books yep they, they it's a common thing that they say throughout this movie is look to the books Find your way home, you must face three tests. Horror, adventure, and fantasy. Ah, ah! And remember this! When in doubt, look to the books! And you get to see all these different titles, like uh, Alice in Wonderland, and uh, he uses Jack and the Beanstalk to his advantage, and it's, it's a super cool scene. Yeah, and he's just flipping through them, and he's like, nah, there's nothing in there that's going to help me. Yeah. Nah, and it's just such a beautiful representation thing of how much media can help us you know oh, there, yeah. there's a reference and there's a lesson in everything we come across you just got to look for it so with that that's an awesome positive for this movie look to the books what a great lesson what are some other positives you want to mention daddy oh one of the things is just that the concept of this movie is just super cool the kid being pulled into the books and he has to face his fears before he can get out it's kind of like a mix of uh, like Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. So yeah. they're, they're pulled into the game. So he's pulled into the book. And kind of a Christmas story because he does... In Christmas story, there's three ghosts. And he has to go through these different phases. And this is what uh, Richard has to do. He has horror, fantasy, and adventure. He's got and, three books. Yes, and it's three books. So it, it's kind of... It's nowhere like these movies at all. But that's where my thought process went i agree there are definitely relatable things and tie-ins from both of those different stories about yeah you're overcoming fears by getting sucked into this fantastical world if yeah. you will but yeah i think the concept of it is just so cool such a positive it does and if it doesn't make you want to read what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah it does yeah, like if you you would just want to makes you want to run to the library and be like all right what else can i pick up this week like i recently got back into reading after many years of parenting babies and toddlers and <laughs> yeah i love it i love it i always just read comic books uh, I, there's a few books that i've read like we I guess I listened to Jurassic Park, or we listened to Jurassic Audio Park. Books, yeah. Yeah, but that is, uh, so if, if you were to be sucked into one of the last books that you read, what would you be in, and would you be happy about that? I would be in Iron Flame, which is not a book for kids, um, but yeah, I would happily go into that. There's <laughs> okay. dragons in it, you're fighting, oh. you're doing, it's just so cool. Interesting. I never knew that that was what you were reading. Yeah, there are uh, dragons in there that you can link up with and they choose you and you get a power from your dragon and huh. stuff, but you're also battling, there's rebellion, there's revolution, there's fighting, love, everything. It's such a good book. Friendship. And, and what's it called again? Iron Flame is the second book. The Iron first Flame. book is called Fourth Wing, and it's just wonderful. Okay. I would be in a Nightwing comic, I think it was the last thing I read. And I don't think I'd be happy to be there. The things that are happening to to Dick Grayson and all in those comics right now, I am not into it. It is a great story, but I would not want to be is, in it. Is Heartless still around? Heartless is still around. Yeah, no, and, I wouldn't uh, want to be there either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I would not recommend that. And then I love the references in this movie. So when they get to the adventure portion, there's references to Moby Dick. There's Gulliver's Travels. There's Treasure Island. And they're all mashed up. Fantasy has a whole fighting a dragon part. And she also rips a page out of her out of her book. And it turns into a magic carpet. So she utilizes that thing from a fantastical uh, story. And it's just awesome. And then Richard, like I had said before, uses a beanstalk out of like a Jack and the Beanstalk story to his advantage. And it's just awesome. The the sick references. And it's like when you're watching the movie Wish 
and you become the Leonardo DiCaprio meme and you're just pointing at everything like I get that reference or I guess that would be more of a uh, a Captain America reference from the Avengers but it's awesome the references are just so cool to point out and find yeah you're grabbing at all the things you know and how they can relate to just so many different things in life yeah but speaking of relatable things the message of this movie I think super easy don't let fear rule your life is being safe important of course but there's a point when it can become limiting which clearly it has for richard yeah you know don't be afraid to take chances and have a little bit of fun i love the representation they do with this with just the bike ramp Mm -hmm. yeah at the beginning of the movie you see richard watching all these kids with like a construction thing using it as a bike ramp and he's like y'all are crazy (laughs) the statistics of you breaking your arm come on now And then afterwards, when he learns his life lessons from the library, he takes all of the safety stuff off his bike and jumps that ramp on his way home. And he's got a smile on his face like, yeah, that was fun. I didn't hurt myself. He took the chance. Yeah, it's a great message just to face your fears. But what you had just said in there also reminds me of a negative of this movie, which we'll get into right now. Yes. The bullying. I can't believe the bullying of this movie to make fun of this kid just because he doesn't want to go off a bike ramp. Hey, guys, look. Richie Tyler. (laughs) Hey, check out his clothes. (laughs) Hey, Tyler. Where are you going? The moon. (laughs) Get cable on that thing, Tyler. (laughs) Hey, what's the matter, you chicken? (laughs) What's the matter, wuss? Got your training wheels? (laughs) just super bad i I don't i don't like that at all yeah like you know poor richard's pulling up and like don't get me wrong there's no secret kids are mean man and when he's pulling up with this safety vest and these flashing lights and all this stuff on his bike richard made himself a target i mean but those kids are still wrong you don't make fun of this kid who's who's just fearful he's scared he's scared and that's his way of coping with it and even though it's easy to make fun of it's not right don't do that And another layer to that is like the way they stereotype Richard is just crazy. Like just because he's nerdy and knows statistics, he's also got to be a wimp and afraid of everything. Yeah, it's it doesn't it does make sense at the time. Like that was easy to make fun of at the time, you know, 94. But now I think the world is just so open to everybody being different in their own thing that we accept everyone's differences now. So like, yeah, that's one of the negatives at the time. That still it's doesn't work to today. Time, yeah. Yeah. It still doesn't work today. It's definitely a negative. Yeah, even the dad, like, it is so palpable how ashamed and embarrassed he is of his son. Like, he's trying to build him this tree house, and he's like, I'm not going up that ladder. You know, the statistics of falling off a ladder and all yeah. this stuff. Hey, how about bring me up that bag of nails? No, come on up. Look, solid as a rock. Dead. of all household accidents involve ladders. Another 3% involve trees. We're looking at 11% probability here. Fine, just, just put the bag in the bucket, okay? And you could just see it on his face how, like, ugh, he is... And then, yeah. Yes, and even Richard, I feel like you can see that pain on his face of, here I am, disappointing my dad again. And it's just, it's super sad. Like... Your kids are going to be whoever they are, and it is our job to be good parents and support them. And yes, do we need to, like, if our kids were ever too safe, which that's our Zosha, Mama Zosh man, <laughs> but we do it in kind ways, like, hey, you'll be okay. We're right here. We're going to do it with you. We're not going to shame her into doing stuff. Like, that's not the right way to go about this guy. No, yeah. And his dad is not a good representation of a good parent. No, it goes back to that, like, typical, like, 90s dad of, like, you need to do, I don't know. I don't know. Old parents. I mean, the yeah. bad, bad parents. We've talked about E.T. One of the 80s worst, parents. Yeah, one of the worst parents ever. <laughs> in the realm of it being a product of its time, there's a point in this movie where the real world starts to turn into an animation. And this paint leaks down from the ceiling. And it is so cheesy and corny. It looks ridiculous. And you can see that Richard is like, trying to dodge different stuff coming from the ceiling and it just outside of saying that it's corny and ridiculous i don't know what else to say about it it looks so bad even when the dragon comes out of this paint and starts going after him it's really cool when the paint hits the books and the bookshelves turn into the animated books Mm -hmm. 
But the portion of it moving is just, oh my gosh. They didn't have it down yet. (laughs) But again, it's 94, product of its time. I get it. But yeah, it's definitely a negative. They were trying something out and they just didn't have it mastered yet. No. And then this is the first time I'm probably going to say this on this podcast. I don't know if it'll be the last, but definitely the first time. The runtime is too short. I want more of this story. It's so cool. It, at an hour and 15 minutes, like it's an hour and 15 minutes, but there is probably two minutes of credits in the beginning. And I think there's four minutes at the end. So this movie's right around an hour, an hour and maybe 10, maybe around that area. And I just want more. It's so cool. And some parents would see that as a positive of, okay, it's only an hour and 15 minutes. I'm not going to waste too much time if my kids don't like it. But I think that it's definitely a negative that this movie is just too short. Give us more. Yeah, they go through the different sections very fast. It's it's a it's a quick pace movie. Like, you know, you're moving, you're going from horror to adventure to fantasy like that and you blink. Yeah. And I agree that yeah, you want to spend a little bit more time. You, they could have created, you know, a little bit more meat and potato to this story, definitely. you know. They they definitely could have amplified it, but I get it. Would you want a remake? Honestly, I think it would be cool as a remake. I think they could update some of the stories, especially with how far they've come on animation, going Uh from the real world to the animated style. Like, I mean, look at uh, Enchanted Alone. Yeah. And that's even an older movie now. Yeah, it is. So I I think a remake would be cool. Would you want a remake movie or would you want a remake show with like four episodes, maybe an hour each? No, a movie. Movie? Okay. I agree. We got too many shows in this world right now. Give me like an hour, 40 minute movie. I think that'd be cool. And is there any negatives or positives in Parental Guidance, Mommy? So I think a positive for parental guidance is that language is pretty much clean with the exception of like British slang words. Yeah, adventure uses them. Yeah. Violence, yes, but it's all cartoon and story based. While immersed in horror, Dr. Jekyll turns to Mr. Hyde and goes to attack Richard. Mm, Dr. Jekyll? Uh, Dr. Mm, J? Uh, my name is Mr. Hyde! Um, in the end, a chandelier falls onto Mr. Hyde, and then he goes down a hole. So, I mean, that whole chase could be like, whoa, what's going on? And then once Richard heads into adventure territory, Captain Ahab is trying to slay Moby Dick. But the whale crushes Ahab's boat and all of his men instead. After that, the whale turns to Richard's boat, and we only see him in adventure escape. From there, the pair come into contact with pirates, which brings along threats and swords, yeah. you know, very piratey things. And then Richard just can't catch a break and ends up getting swallowed by a dragon. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's pretty violent. It's got some violent parts. Yeah. Scary wise, honestly, I'd say the storm at the beginning while you're still in the real world and the empty dark library can be frightening. Yeah. Like, it's eerie. You're like... Our girls are still terrified by storms. Oh, yeah. Especially, like, even just last week, we had some crazy thunder and lightning with it being 90 degrees and they were not having it. Oh, no. So, yeah, I think the storm will get kids... I also think that Mr. Hyde is creepy, but he's a solid childhood horror introduction. Yeah, I think that if parents want to show this to their kids and be like, okay, cool, how do they handle this? They might be able to use this as a stepping stone of, cool, let's move into something a little scarier, because they did like that. Because even if it does scare them a lot, you can you still have that excuse of, it's a cartoon. Yeah. Because he is in cartoon form. Yep. Grown-up stuff, there's poison in the drink that Dr. Jekyll offers, and it's also implied that that same drink is an alcoholic beverage when Adventure says, Stay back! This is a man's drink! (laughs) There's also a funny joke that I really, really liked. I loved this, and I think it'll go over most kids' heads, but it's when Adventure says to Fantasy, How would you like to curl up with a good book? Binding. In your dreams. It's a, it's a solid innuendo. <laughs> solid. Yeah. Um, and then those two same characters later share a kiss. And then cry factor, nada. And as for an age recommendation, you know your kids better than we do. We're just here to give our opinions. The colors and concept of this movie are great and might spark interest in kids to read books and discover new parts of their imaginations. I do think that anything under five will find the horror section to be too spooky, though. So for that, I'm going to say five and up. Now, as for our Rotten Tomato critics, they had this movie at a 19%, which is a thumbs down. That's rough. There's only 21 people that have uh, done a review for this movie because it's an older movie. So people aren't going back to redo it. But I don't know, 90%, that might be as bad as people think it is. All right. 
Audiences have it at a 49%, which is still a thumbs down. Let's see how it holds up in our house. Zosha, do you give the page master a thumbs up, a thumbs middle, or a thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Why a thumbs up? Because I really liked it, and I liked the adventure of it all. Yeah, it's a really cool movie. Would you want to go into a book? Yeah. What book? Um, hmm. Harry Potter? No. I wouldn't want to go into Harry Potter. Either. What about Dogman? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amelia, what do you give this movie? Thumbs middle. A thumbs middle? Why a thumbs middle? Because it was kind of boring, and I liked some stuff. Oh, okay. That's fine. Would you want to go into a book? Yeah. What book? Uh, maybe Harry Potter. Okay. How about Nanette's baguettes? No. Oh, man. I, I would love to have those baguettes. Mommy, what are you giving this movie? I'm going to go with thumbs middle because I want more out of it, but the story's there. The bones are there. It's it's entertaining. It's a quick watch. It's something that I wouldn't mind tossing on again. So I think a thumbs middle is fair. Okay. What about you, Daddy? I am going to break my tradition of not having a thumbs up in a while, and I'm going to go thumbs up on this Ooh, movie. Oh, all right. I think that although it is too short, like you had said, the bones are there. I love the concept. Uh, I think nostalgia is holding on, got its talons in me quite a bit, so I do have to say that that's playing a lot into this score, but I'm going to go thumbs up on this. I love this movie. You're hanging on to that book, man. You're going to go try to find it. <laughs> For sure. And if any of you would like to add the Page Master to your movie night list, it is currently available across platforms. And after watching, let us know if you give it thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down. And when you want to let us know what you think about the movie, please find us on social media. We like to post pictures of us on our movie nights, letting you know what snacks and sweets we're eating. It's a fun place to hang out. Our Facebook is It's Movie Night, and our Instagram is It's Movie Night Pod. Thank you for listening. Join us next week for another movie night. Bye! Bye.